In a few hours, leaders from around the world will meet in Brussels for the first ever nuclear energy summit in conjunction with the IAEA. On hand will be business leaders plus representatives from at least 37 nations. They're expected to focus on expanding nuclear power and driving sustainability. Can that be accomplished? Well, our next guest is in Brussels attending that summit. Seth Gray back with us tonight, president and CEO of Lightbridge Corp, a nuclear fuel technology company based in Virginia. Seth, I looked it up. It's almost midnight there. Thanks for staying up. This is happening right now as some nations nuclear hawks by the way want to get rid decommission their nuclear power technology has been around for decades so i'm trying to get a sense is nuclear power dying or growing it is growing there are many new plants being built in the world existing plants are having their operating licenses extended beyond when they had been scheduled to close and even some closed plants are actually being reopened and what happened at the UN climate conference in Dubai in December was the US joined with other nations to pledge to triple nuclear power in the world by 2050, 26 years from now. And this summit in Brussels is bringing the countries together, mostly at the head of state level, to really move from ambition to action, including with financing mm -hmm. mechanisms, how to achieve the tripling of nuclear power in the world. Which is a great question, and John Podesta is going to be there, America's new climate envoy. Has he signaled where the U.S. is headed? He has. I met with him tonight uh, for over an hour, along with the other American nuclear industry leaders who are uh, invited to be here. And uh, I, I think that I could say that the American government and the nuclear industry are fully aligned in our messaging and what we'll be saying here. I think it will be very effective. One of the points I said that I believe um, will be said in the official American remarks and in their meetings with these heads of state who are here is that it's important to bring the highest levels of safety in deploying nuclear reactors mm -hmm. and nuclear fuels. And the way to do that is deploy American technology because American technology mm -hmm. meets the highest standards. Uh, and you're in that line of business. And of course, uh, NIMBYism, I mean, that's a hot topic when you're talking about condos, when you're talking about where to put a nuclear power plant that become, you know, there aren't many YIMBYs, you know, put that in my backyard. But I know you're, that's why you're out here talking to people. And your company is working on making things cleaner, more efficient, uh, creating power. And honestly, I read through it. I did not quite get it all. Can you tell us in, in just plain English what you're doing? <laughs> Right. We were working with the big utilities that run the major nuclear power plants who were telling us that they wish they could get better performance out of the fuel for the reactors, improved economics, more power, even greater safety margins. And we went and redesigned nuclear fuel from scratch for the first time to work in the existing reactors or new small ones that are being developed. And we had a major milestone this week when under the strategic partnering program agreement we're working uh, under at Idaho National Laboratory, we actually demonstrated producing a rod using the kind of process that we've developed. And it, it's a very different technology. It's a metal fuel instead mm -hmm. of a ceramic pellet in a tube. And it allows for higher levels of uranium enrichment, last longer in the reactor, operate about 1800 degrees Fahrenheit, about 1000 degrees Celsius cooler in the reactor down the center line of the rods than the current oh, okay. fuel and just bring tremendous new safety advantages. And this will also be important for these new small reactors around the world. And we believe we'll also be able to demonstrate that it will allow them to load follow to go up and down in power balancing with renewables on a zero carbon electric grid. And for the people listening real quick that say, Seth, Awesome. Not anywhere in the next, like, 100 miles next to my house. You say what? Well, first of all, some of these new small reactors, especially with the fuel like Lightbridge is developing, could have 
an emergency zone, an evacuation zone that wouldn't even extend beyond the perimeter of the plant. You could live across the street and not have to worry about it. But that said, you don't have to live across the street. Reactors can put out electricity that go over transmission grids. And what you're really gonna want is the power. You're not gonna wanna turn off the lights and getting clean, reliable, safe power, especially in a country and a world with soaring energy demands. That's what we're going to bring. Mm. All right, and I know you guys are trying to make some progress right now in Brussels. Thanks for taking the time. Seth Gray, CEO of Lightbridge Corp. Good to see you. Thank you.